actually, uh, it is not my first regional collaboration project, but it is the most visible project I have done regionally. It is about a project that deal with regional cooperation, environmental technique, and in somehow making peace. And more important, making money. <laughs> <laughs> and money for those people who really need it, the farmers. So I'm happy to be part of this project. Um, I am a physicist. And um, I have a huge, since many years, huge interest in renewable energy. When I was young, I tried to capture lightning. You can imagine that? Mm -hmm. To capture lightning and to produce en energy from that. When I have done my mas master degree in physics, I start capturing lightning. It was amazing. The lab was burning. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really, it is, it is um, a shame to see so huge quantity of energy uh, that will not be used. So I tried again and again. It wasn't the problem to capture the lightning, it was the problem to store the energy within a few milliseconds. That's a problem. Then I said, I have to shift. I have to go to the practical way, to the solar energy, to the photovoltaic. Therefore, I started a career in the semiconductor physics. It was very, very interesting. And in this gilded echo bubble of high tech, I recognized that I'm just using energy, I'm not producing it. So I quit. Um, I worked many years in Siemens lab for uh, development and new solar cells. And after that, I came back to my village, Kufurkara, in Israel, and started working with uh, a group of uh, like-minded friends in a framework, the MOB framework, framework, which aimed to challenge a few, <laughs> a few uh, simple assumptions, such as science, technology belong to cities not the periphery, such as religion, in my case Islam, cannot coexist with science or cannot feed each other. A group of scientists whose parents are farmers from the villages decided to start doing a radical change in our area. To bring the old with the new in order to take part in the wheel of the technology in Israel. That's the aim of our R&D Center. It is not just an international cooperation that all of us are doing uh, for it. It is in somehow, how can we bring something for our community? Few steps, step by steps and we really get a big success in this way. But I am, myself, I continued to work as a consultant in the solar energy. For many institutions, governmental institutions, private sector, and also for NGOs. But I recognized or realized that, that these free energy are afforded by the people who don't need it, the rich people. They don't need anything free. It's really the energy who need it is the farmers or the people who are living far away from the grid. So when I met uh, a colleague of mine, Isaac Berzin, he told me about an American company that uh, produce or develop a new semi-transparent solar panels that uh, allows part of light go through. And these solar panels are made from plastic. And the word plastic uh, 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 took our attention because immediately we thought about the solar plastics that are made from, uh, about the greenhouses, which, which is made from uh, uh, plastics. 
So in our region, we use those uh, green uh, houses in order uh, to grow vegetables, in order to save water mainly, and to um, increase the yield of the, of the farmers. So the question was, what type of wavelengths, what type of radiation can these uh, uh, semi-transparent uh, films let through? And when Konarka told us that they can vary the wavelengths based on the need of the crops, we, was sure, we were sure that we are in business. We were sure that we can generate electricity to the benefit of the people who really need it, mostly. So the question was how to start our uh, first ex experiments. We have to, to design the experiment, we have to put the parameters, and we have to look for partners. For location, in this case, the Van Leer people was very helpful. Immediate, we found willing partners from the regional, uh, uh, from neighboring uh, countries. And um, when it's come uh, about uh, getting money and uh, producing uh, crops. You cannot pass this idea through. You have to stop and to study this idea very carefully. And uh, so, uh, with the help of Valier people, we find a professional teams from our neighbor countries and a good farmers that can run controlled experiment in greenhouses. But first of all, we fix the parameter. That for, therefore, we started with a small experiment in our center with a small our greenhouse, in order to check out if it's okay, we can go ahead or not. It's uh, something to stop or to move ahead. And you can see here, it is the first test in TRDC. We use a small uh, a greenhouse, and in this small greenhouse, we split it in two parts, part which fully covered with B films, and the other part is blank, without anything. And we want to check out if the vegetables, or the cherry tomatoes in this case, of the flowers will change their form, their colors, and etc. And uh, we found out nothing changed. The sherry tomatoes look very good and taste very good. Also, the flowers keep their wonderful colors. So we was encouraged to start the first experiment, and it was in uh, Beit Or beside Ramallah, and we started in this experiment with tomatoes, and we put the, these semi-transparent films not close together. We make space between those films in order to let radiation as much as possible for the crops, in order to foster the photosynthesis process. So uh, you can see, in this case, we can use just the half of the roof. In the first case, we can use all the roof, all the surface of the roof. So, when we start here making this um, um, experiment, we found out that the yield was improved, not decreased. We found out that there's no uh, speci specific uh, phenomena like disease or uh, some damage for the vegetable itself. It works very good. And uh, those um, those uh, results um, give us m more uh, power to start the next experiment in, uh, in Kfarkara, in uh, Israel. We started with uh, cucumbers. We chose cucumbers and tomatoes because most of those vegetables are the most used in our area. And uh, we started this experiment uh, 2010, July 2010. And uh, just me, let me tell you that we are still continuous our, uh, our experiments in a large scale. So in cucumbers, uh, we found out uh, that you can see there, you f we found out when we put the film side by side, the growth process for the vegetables who's under those films is faster. They grow faster because they are seeking for light. But that would not change the output of the yield. 
It's amazing, really amazing. And uh, if you look here to the, our results, we found the same results. We have good yield, no damage, and really, um, you have to test the cucumber. They taste really very good, <laughs> really. The same experiment was done in Jordan with tomatoes. I'm talking about a project in a large scale, which can bring a huge benefit for the right people. About a project then that can uh, foster people to work together. It is not a question of technology, as I say. It's okay, business inside, that's right. But it's not a question only of business and technology. It's a question of cooperation, of willing to do something together. And we succeed to do that, not just in this uh, uh, project, in other projects. It's a, a great example, this project, for regional cooperation. So, um, as you know, we took three parts, three uh, uh, regions, with our not so far away from each other, but with a different climate. And we have, in all three parts, uh, really good results. And uh, this, uh, uh, let me think in some how, um, sustainable technology should have or should seek for not one aim, it should seek for more aims. It is, should, uh, like here, generating energy uh, on one side, protecting crops on other sides, stopping pollution on the other side, generating of uh, uh, carbon, it's really a win-win-win system for all of us. I guess that's the right way to move together in this direction. Thank you very much.